Hello and welcome to step three of using Madbyte, which is actually creating the networks that Madbyte uses as outputs. Uh, so for this, we're going to use the right-hand side of the platform uh, where it says action items. Down here, you'll see network file name. You can name this anything that you wish. Uh, so for instance, I could name this something like standard compounds one, uh, and then the networks will all come out with that as a prefix so that I know what I'm looking at. You can select what sorts of colors you wish to have. So the extract node color you can change or you can change the spin node color. So for instance, if we wanted to see a very vibrant network, I could change the spin code to that color, very hot pink. Um, and it was, well, I can also adjust the extract node sizes and the feature node sizes, as well as the maximum number of spin system members that I would like to see. So what happens is sometimes in the metabolomics data you'll have a very congested part of your toxic spectra which actually ends up generating this massive correlation network of 40 or 50 different members and that's not usable data. Now there may be a couple underlying spin systems that are of interest but you're not going to actually use those for any meaningful purpose. So sometimes you would just go ahead and say alright 20 members is a pretty long chain it's a pretty large scaffold if it is real, so I feel like that's a good cutoff. And then once all of that is complete, all you have to do is hit the Generate Network. And so what the Generate Network button does is it will generate three different networks. The Association Network, the Trimmed Association Network, and the Hybrid Association Network. So to take a look at the difference, the uh, Full Association Network, or Association Network All, if we launch this, it will pull up all of the different connections that we have seen. So for instance, if we take a look at this cluster here, we can see that we have three different macrolides, all of which share a lot of different structural characteristics in the main scaffold, as well as some of the sugars. So if we take a look, we can see that some of these resonances are not the same between them, but most of them are pretty heavily conserved. Uh, same thing for some of these other ones. So what we end up with is this sort of map of shared spectral characteristics across all of our sample sizes and sample sets. One of the features of the network is being able to actually filter based on size. So you remember how I was saying sometimes you get a very large network. Well, if you didn't want to see that, you could simply drag this and you could start to see uh, the larger networks by doing the exact same in the opposite direction. So if you wanted something that was at least five members long, five to seven members, you could start to see the shared characteristics between two different extracts that are pretty heavily conserved uh, scaffolds. Uh, another one that we have is the trimmed. Now the only difference between the trimmed and the full association is that any nodes that don't have shared chemistry are dropped from rendering here. So if you're really looking for analogs or similar compounds, this would be the exact best way to do that. Uh, so for instance, we could see that macrolide cluster again uh, and all of its shared characteristics. The last type is the hybrid association network. So in the hybrid association network, uh, we've taken those shared chemical associations and we've actually collapsed them down to singular points. So for instance, that triangle motif we saw in the last one is now collapsed into a spin system of four members that are all of the features that it saw between all of the samples that share those nodes. So for instance, if you were looking for a new scaffold type, you may want to keep an eye out for something like this that's shared between a lot of different extracts. Okay, thank you very much.